Hello, I'm going to talk about how to securely perform measurements on passwords submitted in login requests. This is joint work with my co-authors at Cornell and the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Modern authentication systems still mainly rely on password-based logins. You probably log into your email, bank account, or social media account using a username and password, and the login client sends those credentials to the server. When the server receives the username and password, it hashes the password and checks that the password hash matches the hash stored in the database corresponding to that username. However, users choose easy-to-guess passwords and reuse them across multiple web services. Therefore, attackers can compromise user accounts just by guessing their passwords or using the password leaked from another web service. This is called credential stuffing, and it is a huge concern for account security. So industry practitioners are trying to rely not only on passwords anymore. But an open question is, what information can be used to differentiate benign login attempts from malicious attacks? In a study at LinkedIn, Freeman et al. looked at using the IP address and user agent with some success. In another study at Microsoft, Tian et al. suggested using password information and showed promising results on simulated data. However, the question remains, how do we safely log information about actual passwords in real login data? In this paper, we design a measurement framework that we call Gossamer for measuring password-derived information in web login systems. This was a one and a half year long process in close collaboration with our university security engineers. We also describe a process for assessing the risk of individual password-based measurements via a simulation. And finally, we conduct a measurement study at the two universities on over 34 million login requests and we report our findings on login user behavior regarding passwords. At both universities, when a student or employee tries to log into their email, bursar, or other school-related account, they do so through a single sign-on service that processes their login request after receiving their username and password. Thus, in order to observe passwords, we need to instrument this SSO server. However, we face a few challenges in doing so. This service affects a lot of people, we don't want to affect the performance of the system, and passwords are very sensitive, so we can't just store them on disk. Prior work looks at the password hash and compares it to other submissions, but this doesn't allow us to get insights into other characteristics of the submitted password. So how can we design a measurement service that measures information about passwords without compromising the security or performance of the login server? We start with a VM that receives the sanitized login request from the SSO service, including the username, password, and headers. We adopt the safe on reboot principle introduced in Bunker by Miklas et al. by ensuring that passwords are never stored in plain text on disk, so rebooting will clear all sensitive data. In order to compare password-derived information across multiple requests, we need some form of temporary storage. For this, we use an ephemeral MySQL database, and we encrypt the fields stored in this database with an in-memory key that expires every 24 hours. By doing this, we achieve periodic deletion, which is the second of our design principles. We then record the password-derived measurements taken on the ephemeral data to a persistent database which is accessible to the researchers, and we use an analysis service to perform further analysis. We restrict access to the measurement service and ephemeral database to a subset of researchers responsible for maintaining the service and thus we achieve least privilege access, our third design principle. However, in the unlikely event of a compromise, it's important that the measurements logged not reveal too much information about users' actual passwords, because the attacker could use these measurements to speed up a guessing attack. So if compromised, how could attackers use password-derived measurements to speed up attacks? If the attacker gains long-term access to the measurement service, it is equivalent to compromising the SSO service itself where the attacker can monitor the passwords as users log in. So instead, we focus on the smash and grab attacker, which steals the stored data in Gossamer. If the attacker steals the ephemeral data, they learn nothing as the key is deleted on reboot. If the attacker steals the persistent database, though, they will gain access to the password-derived information. So we need to ensure that the potential benefit of these measurements is bounded. And we call this design principle bounded leakage logging. So how can we choose measurements that are safe to log? Let's assume that an attacker is performing a password guessing attack against a live login system. They have a guest list of passwords, 
and they will iterate over the guest list, trying each one until a successful login. For example, if the user's password is spider, it would take the attacker five guesses to correctly guess it. We also assume now that they have access to Gossamer logs, which contain the encrypted username and information about the password. In this case, for the password-derived measurements, we consider the ZXCVBN score, a measure of password strength. We assume that the attacker knows the encrypted username for the user they are trying to target. In this case, that encrypted username is the third one on this list, TRZQA1L, and the ZXCVBN score of that user's password is 3. Now the attacker can compute the same score for each of the passwords in their guest list and filter out any passwords that do not have a ZXCVBN score of 3. In this case, we can filter out the first four passwords in the list, and that would only take the attacker one guess from the filtered list to guess the user's actual password. We performed a simulation of this scenario using a breach data set of 307 million passwords, where we took 80% as the attacker's guest list and sampled 10,000 of the remaining 20% as the target passwords. And we graphed the percent increase in attacker success from the baseline without any password-derived information. The solid blue line on the graph shows that the original ZXCBN score significantly increases attacker success. So we tried bucketizing the score, which originally returned an integer between 0 and 4, to a binary 0 or 1. As shown by the green dashed line, the binary ZXCBN score never allowed an increase in attacker success of over 2%, and past 100,000 guesses, there was an improvement of less than 0.1%. In other words, already weak, easily guessable passwords may be guessed, but stronger passwords will not be more easily guessed. So in this case, we chose to log the binary score to satisfy our design principle of bounded leakage logging, and we repeated this simulation for other password-derived measurements. We deployed Gossamer for seven months at University 1 and three months at University 2, after obtaining approval from the respective IRB and IT offices. Throughout this time period, we observed 34 million total login requests. This timeline shows successes by time in light green and failures in dark blue. On this graph, we can see a few big spikes in failed requests, which we confirmed to be attacks through manual analysis. In the first attack, we observed four IPs conducting a coordinated credential stuffing attack spanning two days and successfully compromising 23 accounts. In the second, we observed one IP conducting a credential stuffing attack using the tool Sentry MPA, compromising 14 accounts. In the third, which was at University 2, we saw 12 IPs conduct a naive password spraying attack by pretending to send requests from SMTP and IMAP clients. None of the 76,000 usernames it tried, though, were valid U University 2 usernames, so it did not successfully compromise any accounts. We removed traffic from these three attacks for subsequent analyses to avoid skewing the statistics. These high volume attacks account for 54,000 requests at University 1 which were removed and 81,000 at University 2. We then performed analysis on the remaining non-attack data. In our analyses we found that login friction is still high. Typos are even more common than reported in prior work. Over one in three failed requests at University 1 were typos, and even more were for mobile logins. Retries were also very common. One out of five eventually successful sessions at University 1, and one out of three at University 2 required more than one attempt. And also two-factor authentication impedes usability, adding an average of 14 seconds to a user's login for a duo push. Password managers could help with the first two issues. By looking at the number of users with at least 10 successful logins and no failures, we estimate that about 25% of users are already using password managers. We also looked at the use of breach credentials and found that it is a big problem. We saw 23 users at University 1 and 254 at University 2 that were still using a breach password. We also saw that over 2,000 users at University 1 and 1,000 at University 2 were using a close variant of a breach password also known as a tweaked password. We believe the solution to this is proactive breach alerting when a user logs in or sets a new password. We also saw that the high volume attacks had high fractions of breached passwords, and next, we plan to investigate how to detect password guessing attacks better using password-derived measurements. 
In conclusion, Gossamer is a measurement framework for safely recording information about submitted passwords by conforming to design principles such as bounded leakage logging. Gossamer can be extended with additional password-derived measurements, and the potential risk of such measurements can be evaluated using our simulation of guessing attacks. We hope that the measurements enabled by Gossamer can be used to gain insight into user and attacker behavior, which can inform new login design policies and the development of attack countermeasures. We plan to make Gossamer open source so that it can be used and extended by other groups. Thank you for listening. We have a website with more details on Gossamer at the link on this slide. My co-author Mazar will be able to answer questions in person now or feel free to send me an email.